Hello, love. Um, so I'm just sitting here answering a bunch of frequently asked questions. And one of them has been about my positivity around being positive, about around being um, herpes positive. And I wanted to give some really quick, like a really quick rundown of the process that I've gone through in order to get here. So the first thing was, I mean, anything that happens whenever you feel like you lose a sense of yourself. When I was diagnosed with herpes, I felt like I lost a sense of myself. I lost a a valued part of myself that was centered around my intellect. And I felt like people who get herpes, who contract herpes from other people, are stupid enough to do so. Is that a is that a, a belief that you might have might have shared? Um, because we we have this idea that like, you know, you should um, have safe sex and you should have smart sex. And if you are smart, then you will be safe. And yet, I thought I was being safe. Like I thought I was doing everything in my power to be safe. And yet, other people were being unsafe with me as well as other people were not, obviously, were not disclosing to me, which is unsafe. And of course, like, I could have pried or I could have asked for their papers for when they got tested and etc. But I was ignorant. I didn't know anything about fucking sex because I had never fucking learned anything about sex. And we, we have such a hard time in our society talking about it in general that we just avoid it for the sake of feeling intellectual superiority. Once we get to a certain age and we don't know things about a certain topic, we tend to avoid that topic. Have you noticed that? That we tend to avoid topics that we don't know shit about? Or we tend to make shit up because it feels logical? Or we tend to use whatever knowledge we have from another area of our life to apply to that one because we don't know shit and we're just trying to feel like the common sense <laughs> that everyone should have is is common to you and i was coming from like a an intellectually superior place when I first got diagnosed of like, no, I'm too smart for this. Like, this definitely is not, not me, not my, part of my experience. And I felt like when I was told that I had, that the symptoms I was experiencing were because of herpes, I felt like I was losing something. I felt like I was losing a part of myself that I always thought was was perfect and was infallible and indestructible you know that my my smartness and my logic could protect me forever so whenever we feel like we're losing something we go through the cycle of grief right we go through denial we go through what is it uh bargaining we go through depression we go through all of these different things until we get to acceptance and Whatever phase or stage you're at, that is what I would say is like my quickest tip for dealing with and becoming positive and changing your mindset to a positive one when it comes to the experience of accepting you have herpes is figure out, even journal where you are right now based on where you've already been. So when you first found out that you had herpes, what did your denial experience look like? What did your bargaining experience look like? I think my bargaining experience looked like I just wanted to feel normal, so I ignored it and I basically gambled with other people's um sexual health and sexual status by continuing to have sex without telling anybody that I had it or without um, 
I mean, it was still kind of like a denial phase, but it was also like my, my bargaining with God of like, if I can just have sex like normal, like I used to, um, at times when I'm not experiencing outbreaks, so it feels like it's not even real, it's not even happening, if it's not there, it's not real, um, what, what does that look like? You know, it, it, it looks like me hoping that if I can pretend that it's not real for long enough, then it actually won't be. Then um, my sp- experience will change and will shift and I will no longer experience outbreaks. That didn't happen, but it did send me into depression because when I did start to acknowledge that it wasn't going away and that I couldn't just bargain it away by trying to pretend that I was normal and that everything was still the same, um, I sank into a depression and I felt really isolated. So just journaling or even speaking out loud about your experiences and what they looked like and what they felt like at those times really helps you to understand where you excuse me, where you are on the path to acceptance. Because once you reach that space where you do accept it, that's when the positivity starts to come through and you can shift, you have a mindset shift. When you're going through grief, your mind is set on that experience of grieving that experience of, I have lost something. I have lost my feeling of safety. I have lost my feeling of sexual health and abundance and desire. I have lost that. I have lost attraction to myself. I have lost my sense of worth and my sense of value. You lose something when you get diagnosed with, with an, a sexually transmitted infection because it never goes away. It is for life. And when you lose something forever, you grieve that loss and you can't s- find a different place to set your mind until your mind set around that grief and that loss has been processed. You have to process the mindset that you're in before you can start to shift it and before you can start to change it. So let yourself feel that experience. Figure out where you are in that experience. And if you're still in the denial phase, just start practicing out loud, saying out loud, I have herpes. That is like the biggest Thing that you can do to shift your, your grieving process along because saying I have herpes out loud might break you, might break you the fuck down in the most beautiful, exquisitely painful way that sharpens your senses and sharpens your, your, your acknowledgement of where you're at. So if you're still in denial and you're like, no, get there. Get to that space where you're like, okay, how can I how can I start to find ways to make my life normal again? And without engaging in activities and practices that you used to that are un- now unsafe for others and now compromise others' feelings of safety start to figure out what might make you feel normal and what might make you feel good again. If that means going to therapy, especially because the next part is the depression part and the sadness part and the anxiety part. If going to therapy, whether it's group therapy, it's um, you know a group that has um, STIs or herpes in your area or an online group because there are several on Facebook, whether it's just going and seeing a therapist for the first time in your life or talking about it to a therapist that you've already been seeing and 
saying it out loud, saying that I have the H word out loud is going to help you move along into a space of not just I acknowledge this, but I accept this. So I hope that this has helped. I know this is a little bit longer than I intended it to be, but I think this is as brief as I can make it. Like this is how you move from that that loss experience into a gain experience. And you can start to shift from one way that your mind was set into setting, resetting the bones, you know, resetting and recalibrating where your mind goes when you are triggered by your thoughts around herpes. Because now I'm in such a space where it's like, I feel like I've gained so much from the herpes experience. And that's going to be my next video is what I've gained from having a positive mindset around herpes and what I've gained from accepting that I have herpes. Um, Because that is like where you want to be. You know, you, you want to get to that place where it doesn't fucking bother you as much and it doesn't ruin your life. It doesn't make you feel like everything has changed and like you're never going to get back to normal again. Because I promise you, there is a new normal out there for you and it is better than the one that you started with before you got diagnosed. I promise you, I pinky promise you, This new normal that you're going to find outside of your grief, outside of that devastating moment where you found out, I promise you it's better. I promise you it's better. And I know that it's hard to hear and that it's, it's might be impossible for you to believe right now, but It doesn't have to be possible for it to be true. It just has to be true. And it is. I promise you. I promise you. I love you so much. You are deserving of all the love you desire. You are deserving. You are deserving. You are worthy of all the love that you desire. Maybe your desire has been dimmed by this experience. I promise you, you'll get back. You'll get back on your feet. You'll get back to where you want to be. You're deserving. I love you. You are loved. And I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful rest of your day.